What's going on guys? Uh, this is gonna be a rambly, unstructured video, so brace yourselves uh, if you're into these kind of things. Um, so guys, one of you asked me a very interesting question. Hussein, how do you know all this stuff? How do you talk about th this new technology? Where do you find about these technologies that you're talking about? I was like, I never heard about all, all this stuff. How do you know? Where do you, where, what, what, what blogs are you following? How do you, how do you know about new things that just came out? Not necessarily just came out, but, but show us your process. And I paused on this question because, and I laughed because I asked this exact same question five years ago when I came to this day because I was lost, kind of. I was like, I was, you know, if you know my story, guys, I started working back in 2004, my professional, my first professional job. And, and, and I was just working, you know, just like, hey, uh, this is a problem, solve it, problem, solve it, problem, solve it. Here's a technology, use it. And that it was just like, you know, more like a reactive, you know, not proactive way. It's like, hey, problem, solve it. Hey, learn Oracle. Okay. Learn SQL Server. Okay. Hey, learn GIS. Okay. It's just, it was a very active way. And I, when I, tackle problems, I, I try to solve them. But you, I don't, I wasn't looking for technology. So when I came to the state 2015, I, I started following some blogs and you might say, Hussein, the, these blog and these podcasts and these blogs didn't exist back when you were in Bahrain. Maybe they did, but I don't know what happened. When I came here, something changed. I don't know if it was uh, the environment that I'm closer to Silicon Valley. I have no idea. All of a sudden, I'm now exposed to podcasts, to YouTube channel. Maybe the, the, the whole arena has changed. Now people are talking about this stuff. And now I started learning about this stuff. Right? So I asked, uh, I think uh, his name is Jeff Meyerson, the creator of the Software Engineering Daily Show. I was like, Jeff, how do you know about this stuff? I was so lost because any podcast that he would, back in 2015, any podcast that he would bring people on, I'm completely lost because they would talk about technologies that is just very fresh and very new, you know, Silicon Valley stuff, right? A service mesh and, and new, very leading edge stuff. And not even necessarily bleeding it, just interesting problems. And I was like, ask him, hey, how do you know about this stuff? He said, he said well, eh, sometimes hacker new, sometimes... Uh, I didn't give, he didn't give me a very, a very straightforward answer. And now, five years later, I'm, I'm now producing over 500, 520 content. And now people asking me this question now, and I don't have an answer. <laughs> Funny enough, I don't have an answer. It's just, and now I understand Jeff's response because like, it was like, what are you talking about? It's just like, it's all there. It's very interesting guys, because I, th I don't think it's an easy question to answer because it's just a compound interest of your own knowledge and you plus a mishmash of your own personality to seek answers, to seek things and curiosity, right? It's, it's just a mosaic of different things combined, right? Different personalities. So now when I start being curious, now all these things start to pop up and there's there's very something very important just you actively searching and and seeking new technologies right and i'll give you one example of how i learn and i talked about this in, in some of my videos uh, this is this is this process is called collateral knowledge let's talk about it a little bit uh, so it's it's worth another video so let's say you read a tweet, right? And I'll give you one, one good example about tweet. So someone posted a performance enhancement they found on their Node.js application. So he said, okay, we found some limitation with, with high performance output application when on our Node.js app, and this is how we fix it. So I start reading, and uh, they, they mentioned Nigel's algorithm in TCP. And now, right, again, that was very long time ago. That was 2015, maybe. Right? So I read this stuff, and it's like, okay, what is Nigel algorithm? Then, okay, Nigel algorithm is, a, is, a, is an algorithm that slows down uh, 
TCP segment uh, sending uh, to accumulate more data. You do a little bit of flow controls. And then I was like, all of a sudden, I don't have answers. I have more questions because what the hell is flow control? And what the hell is, and why don't you just send stuff? To the network? What will happen if you don't send? Right? And then I started learning about TCP. I was like, what is TCP? Well, this is something that everybody talks about, but nobody actually explains, right? TCP, hello, everybody knows what TCP is. So it's like, okay, no, not really, because I don't know what that is. So let's, let's dive deep into that. What's that? TCP, well, how, wh why do we need a connection? Right, why don't we just send things? Oh, there is something called UDP that is connectionless, but we need something that is stateful. And okay, wh how do you do that? Oh, TCP handshake, what's that? Oh, sense and act. And you start diving deep into this vertical. And you start asking more questions, which will give you more answers, which will lead to more questions, which will lead to more technologies. All of a sudden, you start knowing stuff that you didn't know. And now, it really depends on, on your personality. Okay, I'm satisfied with this answer. Good. And this is where what makes you like a, every engineer unique uh, from the other. Like, how many questions do you ask before you're satisfied? Some people say, oh, flow control, I know. I know what that's. Good. I'm done. I'm done. Some people will say, no. What, the, what is that? Now, how, does, how does that work? They will, they will try to add their own experience to the question. It says, okay, well, how would that work in proxies, right? Because the proxy is like kind of, it's a terminator of a connection and they, they establish an, another TCP connection on the back end. How do you f control the flow here, right? So they will start solving or maybe introducing problems that nobody thought about before. And that's where you as an engineer start kind of shine. I was like, oh, wow, did anybody thought about this? Maybe someone did, maybe someone did. Maybe you were the first one to think about that stuff. And I'm gonna give you another example. So that's, that's kind of the loop you get into. Another problem is uh, the question that uh, was asked on my IPFS video, right? So that's a good, another good analogy. The IPFS interplanetary, which funny enough, I didn't know what an M means until someone, after I made the video, someone commented that, oh, it's just communication between different planets. So I was like, wow, I'm so dumb that I didn't think about that. <laughs> but it's a, it's a, it's a uh, now I changed my mind about the name. I kind of like it. Interplanetary. It's like you can communicate between different planets. So thank you for whoever said that. So it's like, how did I know about this? I, last week, I know zero thing about IPFS, right? Today, yesterday, I, I made a video about it. So I spent a week learning about this technology. Why? Because it's interesting. But how did I know of it? My source was Google News. I'm subscribed to Google News. And then some article pops in, says, oh, Brave, the browser now supports decentralized web... Uh, um, web content through IPFS. It's like, okay, decentralized is a very interesting thing, right? Very interesting topic because the web is, despite it, the internet is decentralized. If you think about it, HTTP protocol is not decentralized. You go to a certain location to fetch content. And you might say, I was saying, hey, no, not really because I have load balancers. Well, yeah, you have load balancers, you have proxies, but that eventually either will lend you to this machine or this machine. Eventually, it is one machine that serves the content. Yeah, it is, it's distributed, not really distributed. It's duplicated, right, the content everywhere. It's just, that's just high availability concept, right? But it's still, it's located in these sets of machines. The content is there. And... Uh, when I heard about that, I was like, whoa, this is, this is interesting. Let me read about that. So I made a video about the, the news. And then I got interested. And then you guys also kind of encouraged me to learn more about it. So, hey, just make a video about it. Because we're interested to know. And you pushed me to do it. So I, I started learning more about IPFS. And that what makes the IPFS video. So that's one. That's a kind of shorter collateral knowledge, right? And it didn't take much because IPFS is, 
is, is simpler to explain. It's so very, very simple. And the doc is good. Uh, uh, when I wrote it, it's just immediately clicked. And it, didn't, it doesn't have a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, there is some concept that is complex, the, especially the, the distribution of the hash tables and stuff like that. But, but it's very interesting tech. So that's how I learn. Google News, mainly my stuff is coming from Google News. Sometimes it's from my Discord channel where someone will post an article about something and that, I, I don't know about that thing, right? They will solve a problem and they will solve it in a very interesting way using some, some protocol that I never heard about. So we'll pursue that protocol. But in a nutshell, to close out this video, guys, any technology that you're going to learn, anything eventually will break down into atomic level knowledge. And that's why I always yell in my channel, learn these atomic fundamentals because everything that you see, all the garbage that is out there in the software engineering community can be broken down into these fundamentals. It's either networking, it's either uh, basic language constructs. If you think about publish, subscribe concept, it's nothing more than TCP connections that are sent in a different manner, right? It's just, it's just how do you send and receive information? And we call it publish, subscribe. Asynchronous versus synchronous is what matters here. I think you can boil down most of these concepts into synchronicity versus asynchronicity. And that's a very valuable thing. And now when you start building fundamentals on top of that, you don't really need to break down these fundamentals further because, oh, you're good with this. You're satisfied with that. And then that would, well, that would, that's what makes you really good engineer. And that's my process to learn anything. I try to break down this vague thing that's called IPFS into basic things that we all understand. And that's, I think that's why most of you guys like this style, because because you understand, because I break down these things. I don't, I don't use jargon words, if you notice. I don't use fancy none things, the words that I don't understand or none of you understand. I always like to use common words connection right tcp i sometimes say tcp connection even to be more concrete when it comes to this uh, academics phd people they don't like this because yeah no no you should not say this because it could be this ipfs could run on bluetooth so you should say the and that's that's kind of a debate right because if you say connection or just on, uh, they, they try to use abstractions so they can fit s more junk into this concept. Like, oh no, because IPFS works on Bluetooth as well. No, don't say TCP because that will link it only to IP and that will give the indication that this protocol only works on the internet. No, it can work on Bluetooth as well. Sure, but that will confuse people as well, right? So yeah. Explain it in a simpler terms and then work yourself up that hey by the way this is an abstraction that works then. Again, I'm not I don't I'm not I don't have a PhD degree, I don't even have a master's. That's why I like to simplify how I explain things. Right. Obviously, if you have a PhD degree, you can read this abstraction in a very, very simple way. But it's not me, it's just not my style. I, I like concrete fundamentals first first principle things when I talk about things. But yeah, guys, just these, these fundamentals are, are everything, really. And then if you want to be confident in learning new things, just understand those basic building blocks. And you might say, what are these basic building blocks? Unfortunately, I, I don't know if I can tell you. <laughs> really, it's just like I, I have to, you, ha you, you kind of have to identify it. I talked about them in many... Uh, my fundamentals can be different than yours, right? My fundamentals, to me, is, is stops at the, at the, for example, uh, the protocol level, the, the networking level, right? Whereas somewhere, somewhere else fundamentals, when it comes to communication, right, especially in a network engineer, stops at the, uh, at the uh, layer two 
frames level. They will they will look at that level. Like, okay, explain this to me at that level. Explain it to me at that low level. Some people might even go further to go, it's like, oh, how is this, how is it even transferred in the ether? Wi-Fi, explain that to me. Explain how the TCP connection is essentially uh, radio signals, right? Some people will go that far. I wouldn't go that far because I just basically, that's my limit to find the mentors. I don't need to understand how that works. Maybe in the future, I will run into a problem where I need to understand how Wi-Fi works, radio works, for example. It's like, can, can someone sniff things on the radio like uh, and start to uh, decrypt messages? And can they can be can I, can they uh, intercept as like a man in the middle attack and then learn stuff from whatever is being transmitted? Maybe if I decided to solve that problem, I will need to understand that. But at my current level, I don't know. I don't need to. And that's that's the thing, guys. It's just understand the basic. Don't learn. Another example I give is try to avoid learning like Django if you don't know uh, Flask, right? Or avoid learning Flask if you don't know uh, how to spin up a server in Python, just a normal server using uh, like something like Tornado, right? So I always like recommend doing something at the basic block level and then go work yourself up, right? Working with these black boxes such as Django and frameworks and huge frameworks that does most of the work for you uh, deprive you from knowledge, and, and it does start doing things for you that you don't understand how it works. And so, and you might get away with it. This technology is doing most of the work for you and you don't understand how it works. And you might get away with it. Definitely. But there will come a day that something will happen. Something will break. A performance problem will happen. And now you will have to dive deep into this. And you guess what? It's going to take you a long time because you have zero knowledge about what you're using and you'll be absolutely lost. And that feeling sucks because I've been there. That feeling sucks. And it sucked. In my case, it sucks so bad. I, I was debugging soap apps and I didn't know how soap works. So that wasn't fun. So, so I wouldn't make that mistake again. Always learn how things work. Always work learn how these basic principle works and guys uh 20 minutes of uh, rambling i think i'm gonna stop here guys just if you want to learn new technology uh in a nutshell follow follow people on twitter uh learn google news start try to be curious and when you learn a new technology try to break it down into into its fundamentals like first principle basic things and then when you understand how it works it feels really good. Hope that helps, guys. And sorry for the long video. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys are awesome. Goodbye.